Well then, Agent York, do you have any plans for this evening? I was going to head back to the hotel and go over my notes. I need to contact HQ and give a progress report, too. Okay, then let's call it a day here. Sounds good. Contact my office when you finish your report. We'll pick you up tomorrow morning. Diane, the owner of the art gallery, should be back soon. All right, then. Let's do that. Hold on, Agent York. We're going out to eat at Nick's Diner. Would you like to come with us? The diner? That might be nice. Thomas is a great cook, but Nick is the real deal. No visit to Greendale is complete without eating at the A&G. A very appealing proposition. Zach, what do you think? We can always go back to the hotel after eating dinner. Or go directly back to the hotel. You decide, Zach. Um, we're gonna go eat with them just because that's what people do. Alright? Be it social! Mm -hmm. <laughs> I've been sheriff here for a long time now, and this is the worst murder I've ever seen. Our town is a little odd in some ways, but it's usually a peaceful place. We had our fair share of cases, but just the regular stuff. A high school kid shoplifting from the milk barn, maybe? Or some hot-headed kids fighting, fueled on liquor? Nothing more than that. Agent York, what kind of cases have you dealt with in the past? Not much different from those you've just mentioned. The case I was on until last month, well, the guy killed seven girls in a three-month period. He sawed their heads off from the neck and took them back to his house. He cleaned the skulls up and used them as utensils in his daily life. To eat from or as a urine cup. Mm. He hated women. That was his way of dealing with it. He'd fill skulls with ice, cola, and rum. Then he'd down it in one gulp. For him, that was a holy ritual. The question of his mental state was the pivotal point in the court case. Oh, man. For me, he was insane. A hundred percent. Drinking from the skulls. Well, that is one thing, but... But those he had used to relieve himself, he would then just use them to drink from, too. Yeah, that was too much for me. It's just not sanitary. <clears throat> uh, not sanitary. Uh, that's probably not the problem for most of us. What else? Ah, yes. An ingenious law school student raped over 800 victims. That was a nasty one. Thank you, Agent York. Now, let's talk about something else. You don't want to hear any more? That's a shame, isn't it, Zack? I was just about to get to the good part, too. It sounds like you live in a totally different world. I mean, you're like an elite agent who just jumped out from a movie or something. In your eyes, we must look like we're just playing cops and robbers. Ugh, I give up. I can't compete with you. Don't say that, Emily. The cases you have solved are all full-fledged crimes. A crime is a crime. Size doesn't matter. There is no big and small. Crimes always have a, a criminal and a victim. No victim will ever welcome a crime, no matter what its size. So, fundamentally, there is no difference in size. Well said, Agent Morgan. We work day and night to preserve peace and order in this town. You understand that, right? Of course. But still, I don't view shoplifting and Anna's murder as the same level of crime. Me neither. I never even dreamt that such a thing could ever even happen in this town. 
I keep on expecting to see Anna. Here in this diner, waiting on tables. <laughs> Excuse us, Agent Morgan. We should have made dinner a more uplifting experience. Let's call it a night. Okay. Good night, then. <laughs> oh, shit. Okay. Well, we ain't quite out of episode one yet. I take that back. But yeah, I'm gonna probably uh, have to drive a good distance. I could go on foot, but that would just be selfish. Why not take a car that's out of fuel? To save time. <laughs> It'd be funny if it says 0%. That's what I've been having. 69%, of course. So on a number everyone will comment on. I might leave the driving sequence in this one just because I want to talk about the story. I felt like the last... Last little bit of the game was just a really... Oh shit, hang on. Yeah, we'll take a right. See, now this right here saves me. Oh, come the fuck on. Blocking half the screen, come on! Alright, we're good. It doesn't help that it's raining just to make the game more glitchy than it needs to be. Okay. He does these talk sequences in the car. I don't think I've done one yet. Let's do it. Zach. Picking up from where we left off. Tremors. I think Fred Ward was in it. You say Fred Ward and I say... Remo Williams, The Adventure Begins. That one was back in 85, I think. Directed by Guy Hamilton. I guess Hamilton was aiming to start a series in 007. But no more sequels. A real shame. Do you remember the martial arts they used in that film? Called Sinanjin? The ultimate in martial arts, using no weapons at all. Remo's master, Cho, ran across one. And he loved so violence. Ben was a good character. He was played by Joe Gray, the best supporting actor in Cabaret. Of course, in Remo, he had so much makeup on, he couldn't tell. So he has talked about a lot of movies. I will say he did have a little sequence where he talked about Tremors. And, but it was part of the driving. I didn't expect him to go into it, but he talked about... He really talked about it like the way I talk about it. Like it was directed by so-and-so. It came out this year, that year. And uh, I don't know if I included it, but he was best. If you haven't watched Tremors, go watch it. It's a really good movie. I don't know if it's on Netflix or anything, but... I thought I was driving into a body of water for a minute. All right, we're here. Okay then, Zack. Let's go back over our progress. First the victim, Anna's death. She was found hanging from a tree in the forest. She was cut open with a knife from her chest down to her stomach. That was the direct cause of death. The strangulation marks and skull fracture were caused after death. Her tongue was also bit off and found something inside her mouth. Do you remember what that was, Zack? Oh god. Oh god. That's right. We found the same red seed in her mouth. According to Emily, it was raining when Anna was killed. The traces of tears were still evident on her face. Which means the perpetrator killed Anna under a roof in the lumber mill, and then carried her body into the woods after it stopped raining. We found numerous important pieces of evidence at the site of the crime. A total of four things. Knee prints in the grass. A wood chip with metal dust. A photo of a man with a tattoo on his back, and... One other thing. Do you remember what that was, Zach? Okay, um... Sh 
shit. That's right. A broken stiletto heel. Aligning this with the other evidence suggests that two people came into contact with Anna's body prior to it being discovered by us. Those being the perpetrator who killed Anna and this stiletto heel. There is also the possibility that a third party carried Anna to the woods. That means we could be dealing with three people. Two or three people. In any case, Miss Stiletto Heel may have vital information. I need to find her next. We didn't use forensic methods, but we're still closing in on the criminal. <sighs> have I forgotten anything? Ah, of course. The marks on her hand tell us that Anna was gripping something when she died. Do you remember that, Zach? Marks on her hand. What do you think she was holding on to? Ah, shit. Um... Was it the... It wasn't the red wig, was it? Shit, I can't remember! Fucking A! Let's do this. I don't know if it's right. right. Marks on her hand suggest a piece mark. The man in the photo found in the woods had a tattoo. He's almost whispering. Piece mark on his back. So it might be hard to hear. These two could well be related. But we don't know for sure. Next, the town folk. A few are worthy of special attention. Carol McLean, the singer and bar owner. She's Thomas's sister. Then there's Nick Cormack, the owner of the diner. Both of them seem to be hiding something. There's Diane, the owner of the art gallery, who's out of town. Then we have problematic, old, rich, and eccentric Harry. Both will be tough to crack. Well, we just have to go one by one. I've been thinking. One of the biggest rewards here is the fantastic food. Enjoying food is cultural, and yet it's also a bit uncivilized. It's interesting how good food motivates me to work harder during investigations. Oh, and on Emily's back, it was strange to me. Hey, don't take that the wrong way, Zach. I wasn't getting all excited or anything. But it did make me feel strange, nostalgic, and sad, almost. It's starting to rain. I think this case may take a while. Emily! Let's have Emily! I'll eat later! You'll eat right now, young lady. Listen to your mother. I want to hear the rest of the story. Eat your lunch, then take a nap. Then I'll tell you the rest. But I want to hear it now. There's no need to rush things. You must live your life at the pace that is right for you. actually a lot quicker than I thought it would be. This is on been just been playing this shit for hours now. It's amazing. I want to say thank you for all the likes and stuff. Do I say that enough? I don't know if I do. It means a lot. It actually shows me you want more. Besides the Twitter threats, that also helps. I'm just saying. 
Oh, we just cleared episode one. Yes.